Hi, and welcome to a short lesson on stationary points. Um, now, today we're going to be using our skills of differentiation to find where uh, we have a, what's called a stationary point or a turning point. And I'm going to just quickly explain what I mean by that. Um, you can see here on the curve that we've got, obviously, the gradient is varying as the curve progresses. So here we've got positive gradient. Okay, I'm sure you agree. Here, if I was going to find the gradient, it would be negative. And here it's positive again. Now, if we think about the number line, okay, um, we've got our positive numbers. Oops, <laughs> positive. Uh, we've got our negative numbers. Okay. Now, what has to happen in between those two sets of numbers is we hit zero, and that's exactly what the gradient is at these two points here. Okay, where we have the turn from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay, and um, yeah, so if I was going to um, draw a tangent at these particular points, what would that tangent look like? Well, it would be a straight horizontal line here and here. Okay, all right, so tangents would be horizontal, the gradient is equal to zero. Now, a question might ask you to find the coordinates of those particular stationary points. And we can do that using differentiation. So let's have a look. Um, so y equals, the function we've got is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x. Okay. First of all, step one is to find the gradient function, dy by dx. Okay, find the gradient function. So dy by dx in this case, it's like second nature now doing this, isn't it? 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. Okay. Now, we know that at these particular points, dy by dx equals 0 because they're stationary points. Okay. So if dy by dx equals 0 at these points, it therefore is the case that 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 in this case, which is dy, dy by dx, is equal to zero. And it's this that we're going to have to solve to find the x coordinates. Okay, now there's one nice sneaky trick we could use at this point to simplify matters for ourselves, which is to recognize that we've got three minus six and minus nine, all multiples of three. So if I divide through by three on the left and right hand side of this equation, I can make life easier for myself by just having this. And now I can think about, right, this is a quadratic function Okay, it's set equal to zero. Um, my first thought is to try and factorize it because that's the easiest. It's often the quickest way to do it if it factorizes. So I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to give negative three and add to give negative two. I've obviously got x and x to make an x squared. So what would they have to be? They'd have to be minus three and plus one. Okay, now we're not quite there yet because, um, so I should have put in step two here, set dy by dx equals zero. Step three now is to find the um, is to find the x coordinates. So from here, x coordinates. Okay. So um, what value of x would make this bracket equals a zero? It would be x equals three. And which value of x would make this bracket equal to zero? It'd be minus one. Okay. Now we are looking for the coordinates of these. So I now need to put those values of x back into the original equation to find what y is. That tells us y, y equals. Okay, so I am going to have to squeeze this in. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab my calculator and go and find those two values. Um, so the first one is 3 cubed. I'm just going to key this in. 3 cubed minus 3 times um, 3, 3 cubed minus 3. 3 times 3 squared um, minus 9 times 3, which gives me negative 27. Okay, now that looks about right looking at that on the grid. It looks like it could be negative 27. Yeah, looks about right. Negative 27, that's this part here, isn't it? So this is 3, negative 27. And over here, it looks like it's negative 1, and it looks like perhaps somewhere between 5 and 10. Let's see. Um, so if we put negative 1 in, uh, we've got negative 1, all cubed, minus 
3 times negative 1 squared uh, minus 9 times negative 1, which equals 5. Yeah, okay, that looks about right to me. So, yeah, okay, so it's 5. Okay, so the final answer, and I'm just squeezing it in now. Um, uh, so what did I get? I got 3, negative 27 for the first one over here. And then this one over here is negative 1, 5. Okay, I hope that's nice and clear. It's a bit all over the place, but yeah. Okay, so there's the two coordinates of the stationary points for that problem there. Let's go and have a look at another one. This time, um, we've got a slightly different, um, slightly different equation, I think. Oh, what did we have last time? X cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x. No, we haven't. It's exactly the same. Okay, so I think we're going to probably skip that one. Um, it's the one we just did. Okay, let's keep going. Find the coordinates of the station points of the following functions. Okay, so let's skip ahead. And y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, first of all. Okay, so step one, we're going to find what dy by dx is. It's 2x minus 4, and we're going to set it equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to take that nice trick, which is to look for any common multiples, uh, common factors, should I say. And the common factor here is 2, so it's x minus 2 equals 0. That tells me that the x coordinate of my stationary point is 2. And how would I find my y coordinate? I'd put it back into the original function. So y is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 2, add 5, which in this case is 4 minus 8 plus 5, which is equal to 1. So my coordinates of the stationary point here are 2, 1. Okay. Um, and my second one, Let's do it in purple. Um, dy by dx is 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Again, I can see a common factor glaring at me there, which is 6. So it's x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. Let's see if it factorizes. Um, I'm looking for two numbers that have a, multi uh, have a product of negative 2 and add up to 1. Um, so they're going to be um, 2 and negative 1, aren't they? That tells me that the x coordinates are negative 2 and 1. All right, and then I just need to put those individually back into the original function. So the first one is, and let's do it properly this time, minus 2 cubed plus 3 times minus 2 squared minus 12 times minus 2 plus 1. Let's see if we can do that. Minus 16 um, plus 12 plus 24, so minus 16 plus 12 plus 24 plus 1, I get that to be 21. And for my second one, uh, where x is 1, let's put those in, so it's 2 times 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared plus 12 times 1 plus 1, oh, I'm squeezing it in again, um, what's that then? It's going to be 2 plus 3, which is 5, 5 minus 12, which is minus 7, minus 7 add 1 is minus 6. Yeah, okay, so I found them. And so the two answers there, I'm going to squeeze them in here, are um, minus 2, 21, and 1, negative 6. There we go. Okay, so our skills of um, factorising are quite, quite uh, important in this. Okay. All right, so a little bit of mini practice. You might like to pause the video at this point and have a go at these. And um, I will, in due course, I will reveal the answers and see how you did. Okay, good luck. I hope you're not unpausing this before you've done it. Here are the answers. I hope it's gone well there. Okay. Um, and that's nice and clear. Well done with the work.